Well, today's video we have yet another ACOM IC745. This radio was uh, dropped off by a viewer that happened to run across my other video on my ICOM 745 and uh, he contacted me and wanted to know if I would take a look at his. He said it's been a while since he's messed with it over a year. He can't remember everything that was wrong with it. So we're going to do a little testing and troubleshooting and see if we can find out what the problem is. Okay, we have the radio connected to power. Have the dummy load connected and we'll turn it on and see what we get. Okay, it does power up. And uh, the AF gain is wide open and as you can hear, I think you can hear it, there's not very much noise at all. But let's run through the bands. So what this is telling me just by listening to the receiver and running through the bands that you can see some bands are working, some bands are not. Seems that when we get to 15 megahertz through 21 megahertz, it's working. Top band is working up to about seven megahertz. And it seems to be consistent throughout the bands. Okay, let's do a couple of the tests. Okay, I got the radio set to uh, 15 meters. And let's see if we got any power out. and we're showing about a hundred watts out. We'll go down on 20 meters into the voice portion. And there's no power out, no receive. down on 80 meters and we got about 100 watts out we got 28 megahertz and we got good power out okay so what I'm seeing with the radio being intermittent like it is, I saw a while ago 28 megahertz. I had no receive, now I do. Now, in an old radio, like a tube type radio, uh, the first problem I would go look at would be in the band switch. Because that can cause issues that are similar to this. But since this radio really does not have a band switch and it's all CPU controlled, Looks like we need to go and check VCO voltages and see what's going on with the VCO. I want to take a minute to look at the schematic. And here on the schematic we can see C78, C88, C96, and C107. These four capacitors, the one I was telling you about in the other 745 video, there's uh, or plastic tremors that needs to be replaced and these are just a VCO 
R43, which is uh, on the base of Q7. This um, sets the voltage for the uh, PLL lock voltage. It's a uh, it's a 1.2k resistor, and it puts it on. So the resistor is a little high, and it puts it on the edge. Um, the voltage range we're looking for is somewhere between you know two to three volts. So we're not looking at a whole lot of voltage. Um, R46 is where we'll monitor the voltage at when uh, checking the voltage on the PLL. So looking at our PLL board layout, you'll find C107 here, C96, C88, and C78 here. Q7 is here, R43 is here, and where we'll monitor the voltage at on R47 is here. Okay, I have the uh, scope connected to R46 so we can monitor the voltage. Scope is set to 5 volts per division. So we'll turn the radio on. Okay, you saw for a moment that the, uh, the scope went high. Now it's come down to about 3 volts. So what I'm going to do is just go through the bands and see where the uh, scope shows we at. Right now we're currently on 1.9 megahertz. 3.5. Now you see the voltage has gone up to about 5 volts. So we're completely out of lock on that part of the PLL. And that one's gone up to about 14 volts. So we're out of lock there. And that's on 10 megahertz. Right, we're at 18 megahertz and it's in lock. 24 megahertz is in lock. But now you see it's fluctuating, it just went out of lock. And back to 1.9 megahertz. So it looks like we're getting a lot of intermittent readings as we go through the bands um, this tells me that the voltage on the PLL um, is about right there shouldn't be no problem with the voltage uh, like I say sometimes you need to change out R43 to a lower value um, you have to play with it somewhere between 910 to 1.2 uh, K ohms and this will get the voltage range between the 2 to 3 volts that we are looking for. Um, R43 is a little bit on the high side, so that puts the uh, PLL voltage lock sort of on the edge. And if that resistor goes out of tolerance, it can cause certain bands to start going out. Mostly it will be either on the lower band or on the higher band. Um, but since we'll get inconsistency throughout the whole band, um, we can rule out R43 being the problem. Let's go to uh, another band that's out of lock. Okay, you see we're in lock there. But on 7 megahertz, we're out of lock. Let's try a little something here. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go through these tremors and see if we can uh, stabilize them. Um, sometimes these tremors get corroded and that causes intermittent problems. So. We're going to start at 7.999 megahertz and uh, we're going to look at the lock voltage on the scope and I had the single generator connected and right now I don't know if you can see it in the camera 
but the uh, lock voltage is uh, showing well over I think 7 volts or close to 7 volts we had 2 volts per vision on the scope and I hear nothing in the receiver so we're going to wiggle uh, see it's going to be C78 on the PLL board and see what happens So what we did here was come to C78, I have the top off the uh, PLL can so I can see what's going on with the tremors to see if any of them are cracked or, or even have seen them fall out before. So I just twisted it back and forth and it's doing that you can hear it start to come in on the receiver and uh, I've got it adjusted now to about 6.5 volts per the manual and we'll move on to the next band and see what we get okay we have it on 14.999 megahertz we're going to come here to C88 and we're going to give it a twist around and uh, we'll also be monitoring the scope as you can see it's shot way up high over 7 volts I'll turn the volume up. Yeah. Okay, that's six point five volts. And uh, I'm using my 8040 single generator, and it's it's just generating on AM. So we're just using that for a reference to hear when the receiver comes in. So I know the tone don't sound right because we're in single sideband, and uh, we're just using this for just for a reference to listen for a tone. Okay, I got it set to 21.9999. We'll go to uh, C96, should be here, and we'll look at the scope. I'll turn the generator over to generate, and we've already got a tone, and we're sitting just below six volts. Really, really, really dirty tremor. Okay. We're locked on about 6.5 volts. Okay, radio is set to 30.0015 megahertz. And we'll be adjusting C107. I've already had the generator on and there's nothing from the receiver. And we'll take a peek at the scope. It's setting up above 7 volts. Wiggle the tremor back and forth. And there we go. see that tremor is completely faulty just by touching it let's move it around a couple more times see if we can clean some of that contaminant off of it Okay, it's 
seems to be holding okay right there okay so this is C107 the higher band I'll turn the volume up and you can see just by tapping on it it's going crazy but it's holding this voltage all right all of those have to go as I said I think R43 is okay we seem to be able to get a good voltage swing on each capacitor as we tuned them and uh, I don't think we'll need to worry about changing or lowering the value of R43 we'll leave it at a the stock value and see how that goes alright since we uh, spun all the capacitors around and hopefully got a lot of the uh, contamination out of them I figured we'd do uh, just a little on air test and see what we get on 20 meters. Five, 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 you're fading a little bit uh, in Michigan, Lake India, name is Paul, Papa Alpha United Lima. Very weak signals out there today. The bands have really been terrible. USL uh, NP01. station there. There's nothing at all on the DX portion. Sound like 40 meters is dead here also today. All right, so we know the radio is now back working. Um, is it going to stay that way? No, those capacitors are in too bad a shape to uh, to leave like this. So uh, I'll have to get back on the phone to ICOM and get them ordered. The original numbers that I had tried to order from ICOM they emailed me back and said they were no longer available but they have sent me the uh, the new part numbers that we replaced these and all 
pull them up and show you. Okay, I have the email pulled up and the replacement part for the six picofarad capacitors is 4610000100 and they are two dollars and ninety two cent each you'll need two of those and for the 12 picofarad capacitor part number 4610000110 they are also two ninety two each and you'll need three of those. One of that is for the uh, second oscillator that you'll need to replace that plastic trimmer which is also a 12 picofarad. And this was from Mr. Carl over at Parts Specialist at ICOM America. So this was also sent along with the radio. This is the PyX board that um, replaces the original RAM module and it has a 27C256 PROM and an SRM 2016N10 SRAM chip the PROM holds the volatile memory in the radio that keeps the uh, channel alignment and the SRAM chip just holds user memories and and so forth in the chip and uh, you also see there's a few passive components a um, couple of capacitors resistors on the back of it we have a uh, battery to hold the SRAM memory this is jumpered at J1 I reckon this is for the 745 at 751 it would be jumpered at a different place and there's two more ICs here more passives and uh, I can't see any details on these two ICs so we put it in the microscope take a look at it okay that's U3 the largest chip on the back and as you say uh, Dave would say a bloody ripper oh, that'll make you seasick on it they have completely Scrap, uh, ground off all numbers and the other chip is the same way so uh, reverse engineering this board would be a little tough but that's okay we have other ways that I'll uh, be working on to uh, look at solving that problem I want to give a big thanks to Van for taking the time to drive up from South Carolina and bring us this radio to look at and get a little troubleshooting on. We'll get the parts ordered, get her fixed up, get the old girl back on the air, and we'll get the uh, new rail module installed. And in pre future videos, we'll get back on mine. When the parts come in, we'll get the all the VCO tremors replaced get it tuned in a line we'll look at doing some AM modifications and we'll also look at uh, building this board this board is about 69 bucks on the web but I think we can build it for less than ten dollars we just have to figure out the uh, the software and get all that in and get that one back up and going so it shouldn't be too bad we'll, have a little learning process on this RAM board and uh, if you like the video as always uh, give it a thumbs up speaking of thumbs shout out to my good friend scene up in England as you can see the thumb is getting better put the hammers away I'm not using them while it's cold anymore <laughs> anyway we'll catch you in the next video 73 y'all